Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to give you a brief update on the situation in Germany. Um, we had New Year's Eve a couple of days ago and we also have um, the extreme unrest or let's say the dissatisfaction of the German farmers with um, the increased tax load that they see themselves confronted with as a result of the yeah, budgetary changes that needed to be done as I informed you in a um, previous video. So um, maybe start with New Year's Eve. Um, maybe the complete story has not come to light yet, uh, but we have a little more knowledge now on what happened. So there were extreme cases of violence uh, committed by uh, some of our guests here, but um, yeah, the authorities don't seem to do anything about it. Um, they actually wanted to um, uh, keep that information from uh, leaking to the public, as always, as they always do. But nothing has been done so far about it. Um, the perpetrators, um, they actually attacked a male nurse and a doctor that um, was supposed to, or that, that, that should help um, one of their brothers, I think who had a hand injury on New Year's Eve. Gee, I wonder how he could have gotten that hand injury. All of them intoxicated, of course, and just like everybody, even the people who pay into our medical system, they have to wait uh, until the doctor is ready for them. Um, but they didn't like that, that they are treated like everyone else, even like the people who pay uh, I'm sure they didn't pay into the welfare system or into the medical system. Um, so uh, they became angry at the medical staff and attacked them. Uh, uh, the male nurse uh, was reported to be lying unconsciously on the floor of the hospital in Berlin. Yeah, uh, that is, um, I think, um, a lot of medical staff is told by their employers not to talk about these things in public but this is pretty normal i have uh, heard um, that that, that um, these exotics are attacking medical staff because they don't understand that they need to wait until the doctor is ready for them or until other patients who maybe had an appointment or whatever are treated and it's it's mostly yeah male relatives of the patients who then attack the medical staff okay so that is something I thought was worth mentioning, just so that you you are informed <laughs> on this front. Now let's uh, turn to the to the farmers' uh, revolt. Uh, um, th <laughs> there was a funny incident. I think um, Mr. Habeck uh, was spending his vacation on some kind of island off the coast of Frisia. I think it's a, uh, a little island. And um, he came back by a ferry boat, so not by airplane, of course, because that's evil. No, he took the ferry boat. And the farmers, they, I think, it is reported that it was around about 100 farmers, that they were blocking him from leaving the ferry boat at the ferry port. And uh, then law enforcement was called and they had a clash with these protesters. And, um, yeah, they used then... Um, chemical agents to disperse the crowd and of course um, some sort of um, secret police or political police force uh, it's called Staatsschutz um, it's, it's, yeah you can look up what that is but um, they are now investigating of course and um, I think if I didn't yeah, or, or at least the, the protesting farmers are charged with um, disturbance of the peace or something like that. Uh, bear in mind that uh, this is not the treatment that uh, these uh, um, yeah, um, shock troops of our globalist elites are getting when they glue themselves to roads in order to disrupt traffic. Uh, that is a disturbance of the peace, obviously, but I'm, I don't think they are charged with that. And uh, also, nobody is uh, the police. Um, yeah, officers are not carrying them away or using tear gas or something against them. Of course, they are protecting them from people who want to clear the road. Um, and also, exotics who are protesting for Palestinian groups here, very violently, very loudly on the streets. Uh, they're also not confronted by the officers. Quite the opposite, actually. 
and um, so just uh, so that you understand the uh, differential treatment that is going on here how angry farmers are treated when they are protesting and how exotics and uh, these climate um, sec people are treated by our law enforcement by the authorities and also what kind of legal trouble they get into um, bear in mind when a lot of these farmers be when they get investigated and maybe charged uh, they might fa face um, really really harsh penalties uh, um, and I'm not sure that that these other activists are facing equal treatment here I don't think so but that is you, you can sum that up under a narco tyranny that um, uh, um, yeah, offenses crimes wrongdoings etc is only ever um, uh, punished or even yeah, um, cases are opened only when it is uh, convenient for the government when it's people that they want to see in jail that uh, are opposition groups or people that are not um, in league with the government but when it's about exotics and about these climate people they are uh, fully um, aligned ideologically with our government and that is why they're not doing anything about them uh, even though they might be breaking laws but the um, as you know um, the prosecutors are controlled by politicians so they are directly following the orders of politicians that means if a green party politician says do not investigate this group do not investigate this person then the prosecutor says oh no charges no charges no case nope 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 and when they tell them to go after a certain group or go after a certain person then they do that they do just that and I mean even though officers might detain someone the prosecutor then just lets them go again and no they will never see a judge yeah and this is how it goes in Germany yeah? and you can see this once again very beautifully anyway but um, this little skirmish um, between um, Mr. Habeck <laughs> and uh, law enforcement and the and the angry farmers just shows you um, how angry they are. In fact, the government already um, yeah backpedaled a little bit. So they say now that um, I told you that what the farmers are facing is that for their agricultural vehicles, for tractors and stuff like that, they need to pay now also the mm, vehicle tax. Um, so if a person has a car he needs to pay a certain road tax or vehicle tax for the for the year an annual tax um, and um, they until now didn't have to do that and also their um, diesel um, for their um, tractors um, yeah they don't pay any tax on that and that will be taxed too um, that is of course not a, a elimination of a subsidy but it is an additional tax and um, yeah, the government now says okay you don't need to pay the vehicle tax uh, I don't know if that's the right word in English I didn't bother to look it up sorry but um, and also um, that the the taxation on agricultural diesel would be um, not coming all at once but in steps but in the end it will come so they backpedaled a little bit but I think that's not enough and by the way the farmers they they also say that they're not protesting because of these things but they're but this is just the straw that broke the camel's back yeah or the as we say in Germany the the the, the drop that made the top flow over um, this is just they're angry for a lot of reasons a lot of red tape a lot of government regulations nitrate uh, um, levels and all that stuff um, yeah, they're really angry at uh, Brussels and the way ex especially how the German authorities are implementing the rules from Brussels other countries are doing that differently I heard for example that when it comes to uh, nitrates um, then other European countries they uh, forwarded the average nitrate numbers to Brussels and the Germans the German authorities they they passed on the top numbers so um, not the average values and and this is very typical for Germany and this is of course not uh, done by accident the Green Party bureaucrats they know very well oh if we just if we just uh, 
don't pass on the average value of nitrates in the ground, but the, the, the peak values per measurement site, then we get hit with insane um, um, levels um, that we need to keep yeah? and um, or limits. Yeah? All the other countries get the limits that would go along with the average values and we get hit with the limits that uh, correspond to the uh, or that are calculated from the peak values and that means a much harsher treatment for German farmers and um, well I didn't check if that story is true but I I have no well maybe I should <laughs> but I, I really I don't doubt that it sounds plausible and this is always what they do they, 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 they use the rules from Brussels and they tweak and manipulate a little bit here and there so that Germany is hit the hardest um, it's no longer about just deindustrialization, so it's not like a Morgenthau plan. So now they even want to um, destroy German agriculture on top of the German industry. So uh, we will not be even a farming country anymore. We will be doing nothing then. Maybe, maybe an open air museum or something. I have no idea. Anyway, so uh, this is my little update. Um, let me know what you think about that and I keep you updated if something else happens, especially leading up to uh, January 8th. That is when the, um, the trains or the German railways, um, yeah, Deutsche Bahn, when they will be on strike again, so you can take the train. The farmers want to block the Autobahn and the major roads and traffic uh, centers and hubs. So that means you on January 8th, I think you cannot take the train and you cannot take major roads. So is that a general strike? No, it's not, but it is a severe traffic uh, situation. <laughs> so, uh, servus, Kameraden.